Hey folks, welcome to this week's edition of Thursdays with Mike. We've been going through the Vineyard Statement of Faith, and uh, we're actually up to paragraphs 5, 6, and 7, which are kind of a summary title, at least in the, uh, the, the, the current brochure, of God's Providence, Kingdom, Law, and Covenants, which doesn't sound particularly exciting. It doesn't necessarily draw you in, I suppose. Uh, but really what these are is the story. I mean, it's, it's where we really, we really get into the, the Old Testament narrative, the story. That also probably doesn't really draw you in. One of my reads last year was um, uh, Andy Stanley's book. Gosh, which one was that now? Irresistible. Uh, irresistible, in which, um, uh, you know, bottom line, Andy Stanley said, we just need to kind of get off the Old Testament because it's highly resistible and just get into Jesus. Jesus is very irresistible. And, and so let's not lead with Old Testament. In fact, just kind of, we just need the New Testament and Psalms. I mean, he wasn't that extreme, but a minimizing of Old Testament because it's just negative. It's a turn off, etc. Um, so it was an interesting read, like Andy Stanley, um, but Vineyard Statement of Faith actually builds the Old Testament story in uh, in the course of three paragraphs. So, yeah, we're, we're just not going to be detaching the Old Testament anytime soon. Um, uh, I actually speak of the Old Testament as not as the Old Testament. I like to speak of it as the the Hebrew Scriptures. Or if I'm trying to sound exotic, I will I will mention how if you ever read this old book of spiritual wisdom called the Tanakh. Um, uh, Tanakh is the is the Jewish word for the Hebrew Scriptures. The Tanakh. We Gentiles have kind of apprehended it. We've uh, well, okay, they might say we've hijacked it, but we've kind of taken it. We've we've gentilized it, and uh, and we've made it the Old Testament as opposed to the New Testament. And for some reason, that's all kind of well, just rather dismissive, I think, to uh, um, uh, to to our our Jewish brothers and sisters to whom we owe a tremendous debt because it is, after all their heritage and their uh, their text. So at uh, any rate, so yeah, we're, we don't detach. We actually get into it uh, as far as the story. And, and, what, and what I've got today, I think before just jumping into those paragraphs, which first one is focused on Abraham, second on Moses, third on David, which are the three kind of touchstones or stepping stones uh, that we take in the Vineyard, of, of Vineyard Statement of Faith. Uh, I, I've been reading this week the uh, daily meditations from Richard Rohr. Sometimes I read them, sometimes I don't. Uh, it just depends on, on where I am devotionally in my reading time and such. And, and this week really perked my interest. I'm glad I, I read them because I've just been struck how Vineyard Statement of Faith has doesn't have anything about John Wimber, doesn't have anything about... Uh, the Anaheim Vineyard, about baptisms and, and the, the ocean down in Southern California. In essence, it, this isn't our story history. It's the bigger story history. And uh, Roar this week in his daily meditations is uh, talking about what he calls the cosmic egg, which I just lost a bunch of you right there. Lost a bunch of you probably with Roar. Cosmic egg? Okay, uh, that's it. I'm just tuning out. That's fine. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll see you next time, maybe. But, um, you know, Cosmic Egg, I, I think of it actually as those Russian dolls. I can't think of what the proper name is for those Russian dolls. Uh, but, but, you know, the 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 ones that, that fit within one another. This is like a three-level Russian doll where we've uh, we've got this little doll on the inside encompassed by another, encompassed by another, or as Rohr has it, it's a cosmic egg, series of domes, uh, or if we use the Hebrew word, the chuppah. We have chuppahs, three levels of, of chuppahs. And at the, the smallest level, it's my story, and then arching over that is our story. And then arching over that is the story. And essentially what we have here in the Vineyard Statement of Faith is the story. 
And whenever I go through the, the statement of faith or a group of people, uh, the challenge is always as we look at the story, which is the over-encompassing chuppah uh, over us of, of God's activity and work in the world, which we call the kingdom of God. It's finding my story and then our story uh, beneath that. And, and it, it, it's kind of like uh, Sam Ganji says to, to, to Frodo, I wonder what kind of story we've fallen into. What's this overarching narrative in which we find meaning? So I'm, I'm just going to read a couple of things about these three levels of stories because I think it sets it in context. If I was teaching the class, uh, this is, I mean, I put it in my binder here for whenever this class might happen again because I'm, I'm going to take time to read through this because it, it helps put in perspective. We're not just dealing with Old Testament history and names and dates and blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, there's Abraham. He was 2,000 years ago. Or, I'm sorry, 4,000 years ago. And then track forward a little bit and you've got Moses and then you've got David and then you've got all these kings and you know, blah, 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 blah. Let's get to the real important stuff. It's not just a chronological timeline. Uh, it's actually the story. It's this overarching story. So we have my story, and, and the challenge, I think, of the statement of faith is actually getting us to expand our horizons just a bit. This is what uh, Roar says about uh, about the dome of my story. It's often, the dome of my story is often all the postmodern person has left. My power, my prestige, and my possessions. It's the little stage where I do my dance and where the questions are usually, who is watching me? How do I feel? What do I believe? What makes me unique? All right, that little stage would probably be called social media. Um, it's a passing arena, to be certain. It will be over in a few years, and it's frankly not very interesting. Okay, that's definitely social media. Uh, if it's all that we have to talk about. My story is not big enough or true enough to create large or meaningful patterns by itself. It is all just personal anecdotes, and some people live their whole lives there with no need for broader connections. Perhaps we can see how fragile, unprotected, and constantly striving this self will almost certainly be. Self-focused people are usually very easily offended, fearful, and therefore often posturing and pretentious. Once again, okay, this is social media. My opinion is that if we stay in this smallest dome of meaning, we often move towards a neurotic self-image. Psychologist Gene Houston puts it this way. When mythic material remains latent, unused, and unexplored, it can lead to pathological behavior. I'm sorry about... I don't want to keep saying, yeah, this is definitely social media, but it, you can see it. I mean, you can you can just see it. this is this little world of my story trying to make it into a platform of meaning somehow. This small and fragile self needs to be part of something more significant. And so it creates dramas, tragedies, and victimhood to put itself on a larger stage. And it just never quite works. And we just get more and more desperate somehow to make it all connect. The small self is intrinsically unhappy because it has no ontological foundation that is no connection with a broader sense of being and, and meaning. It is not real. It does not exist. It will always be insecure, afraid, and scrambling for significance. In Jesus' language, the branch cut off from the vine is useless. That's very pertinent for the vineyard, uh, vineyard statement of faith being what we're talking about. Um, it, it, it's us as individual branches trying to find meaning in ourselves. And the statement of faith is offering, here's a whole vine that fills the whole universe. Um, this is the story, and it's all about us being grafted in to the story. Not grafted into the vineyard. That kind of gets to the next level, which is our story. Okay, now so I'm just going to go ahead and read that real quick here. Um, we, we do seem to need this second level of our stories. Now it's a bunch of my stories getting together and finding connected meaning in our story. Um, but we seem to need this our story level for our own identity and security as social beings. This is also the realm of social media, of course. Um, it is both good and necessary. But if we try to make it the whole enchilada, 
we end up with the culture and identity wars we have today. I think this is some brilliant diagnosis right here. Um, most of us have to work through multiple memberships, family, neighborhood, religious affiliation, gender, country. Uh, these communities are schools for relationship, connection, and almost all virtue as we know it. Everyone has access to this level of meaning, consciously or unconsciously, negatively or positively. We are essentially social beings and we live inside of some shared meanings, uh, which become our reference points and our runway. Our story is the necessary training ground for belonging, attaching, trusting, and loving. If we are raised on a healthy family system, we generally feel positive about our group possibilities, including our religious and cultural rituals and traditions. Unfortunately, some people get stuck here and spend their lives defending the boundaries and glory of their group. They make plans for war and, and perfect the scapegoating of others. Such group egocentricity is more dangerous than personal egocentricity because there's more of us. We have grouped uh, possibilities of scapegoating and destruction, potentially. It looks like greatness when it is often no more than very well-disguised narcissism. I don't have much self-knowledge, so I'll throw all of my cash uh, into being Italian. I live on the surface of my own soul, but I sure play good football uh, or fantasy football. I have no deep identity, so I live through my husband or wife or children or friends, or I would add political party. People try to find identity in a group, an institutional affiliation, a nation, a public cause, or today, like never before, public fame or infamy. Somehow, to be on the news or in social media is to be immortalized. People feel protected inside of the group identity or public fame. Uh, Jesus, however, was not into groupthink or loyalty tests. I'm convinced God could care less about them, but God also seems to know that we need symbols, songs, sacred times and places for communal support and encouragement. So there's a legitimate human need here. Um, it's just we haven't yet advanced to, to the this ultimate level of meaning and significance that really provides a healthy context for life. That's me summarizing here uh, what I'm what I'm hearing. Um, however, we we will need these boundary markers less and less as we move towards the real center. Thus, though we often see a certain freedom in wise elders and people who have suffered and come through. Um, okay, I'm, let me try that sentence one more time. Thus, we often see a certain freedom in wise elders and people who have suffered and come through renewed. Um, uh, and this I just say from personal experience. Suffering is what bursts the bubble. My story just isn't big enough to contain or to provide perspective for the suffering that I encounter, both within my story and the world around me. And ultimately, our story is not enough either. It just bursts the bubble. If we suffer enough, we're forced to look at the wider canopy over all of us, over all of our stories and over all of our individual stories. Uh, this is what the Vineyard Statement of Faith uh, and a biblical Weltanschauung, which is the fancy German word for worldview, that's what it's seeking to do, to, to get us to this place of the, the ultimate chupa. Uh, and, and, and so I could, I, I mean, I could have a sphere over myself here uh, and, and then a larger, all right, let's say that's here. This is my bubble, right? Don't step into it. This is my bubble. That's my story. The ceiling in this room would be the our story ceiling. Um, really, the only thing that comes close to capturing the vastness and transcendence of the our story ceiling would be the atmosphere. Um, and, and we're talking about troposphere. I mean, this has layers too. The atmosphere is multi-layered. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, ionosphere, and then exosphere. Uh, we have layers upon layers, which is one of the reasons why the Hebrew word for heaven is shemayim, plural, heavens. 
it's layered up there. So we're dealing with a transcendence that has layers and is expansive. It's a dome uh, that surrounds all of us, encompasses all of us, and yet there is a whole reality beyond that. It's all mind-blowing. Um, so I'm going to end this. I need to because we're at like 15 minutes just about now. Uh, just by reading Roar's comments on the that ultimate layer of of the atmosphere, that final dome of uh, uh, the the overarching transcendent reality of God of the story. Okay, the complete cosmic egg is uniquely the work of God in healthy religion. Biblical tradition at its best honors and combines all three levels of story personal journey as raw material, communal identity as school and training ground, and then true transcendence as the integration and gathering place for all the parts together. So it's not ignoring or losing my story. No, it's ultimately my story is found in the context of our story, which fi finally has meaning as all of the our stories come together under this dome of the kingdom of God that transcends all of us and puts all of us in our place together as we are being built together and rising to become a holy temple in the Lord. That's Paul's language in Ephesians 2. Um, sorry, get really like philosophical and such here, but, uh, but I mean, this is good. That's why we're doing more than just reading paragraphs about history. Okay, that's the point. Um, so, all right, so, yeah, the complete cosmic egg, blah, 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 uh, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada. Okay, uh, true transcendence, um, I'm just going to have to read this again. The complete cosmic egg is uniquely the work of God and healthy religion. Biblical tradition is at its best honors and combines all three levels of story. Personal journey is raw material. Communal identity is school and training ground. And true transcendence is the integration and gathering place for all the parts together. We call it holiness which is the ultimate form of wholeness. Without the great stories that free us we remain trapped in small cultural and private worlds. All right, that's the point of the overarching story. And that's why the next three paragraphs in the Vineyard Statement of Faith. And that's why we still need our Tanakh. Our Tanakh is the taproot from which everything else ultimately issues, including Jesus, that provides this overarching perspective in, in which, uh, you know, all our small worlds suddenly can make sense and they come together without the great patterns that are always true we get lost in choosing between tiny patterns true transcendence frees us from the tyranny of i am and the idolatry of we are wow okay true transcendence frees us from the tyranny of i am and the idolatry of we are okay that that idolatry can be painted red or blue or whatever other color you choose. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's still the idolatry of a tiny story. Um, uh, we, need, we need to look harder and to see deeper and yeah, a much more all-inclusive canopy over us. Anything smaller is spiritual bypassing. It won't get us very far on the path of either liberation or wisdom. We cannot bypass the two smaller domes and find any authenticity or love by a supposed leap to the third level. So you got to do your work of the my story and our story before you can really appreciate the canopy. Okay, sorry, no shortcuts. No, uh, none of those cards on a Monopoly game that allow you to, to pass go and, and, and you just get a quick trip around and collect your 200 bucks or whatever. Um, so now you can't do that. We all have met people who present much God talk or spiritual talk, but we find ourselves almost afraid of them because they so lack substance or grounding. So we need people who they know their story they, they have an hour story and that's become linked and has found context within the wider story of God. If all three domes are taken seriously, as the Bible does very well, we have a full life, fully human and fully divine. The genius of the biblical revelation is that it gives us permission and even direction to take conscious ownership of our own story at every level, every part of our life and experience. God will use all of this material. He wastes nothing, even the negative parts, to bring us to life and love. Now that's 
really good news. Suddenly we can take our own lives seriously, the good and the bad parts, because God has done it first. We are neither trapped inside of our little culture and group identity, nor our private pain and hurts. We are people of the big picture and live inside of a lovely cosmic egg of full meaning where nothing is eliminated and all is used to bring us to life. Jesus taught us to call that the kingdom of God. Wow. So there you go. Um, Selah. Think on that. As we get into these three paragraphs uh, uh, next week, there's, that's what we're really talking about, okay? Uh, my story merging with our story and ultimately seeing the perspective of the great overarching story of God, which is what we call the kingdom of God. And that's all the vineyard, our story in the vineyard is seeking to be a part of um, and to flow in is that overarching story of God which is breaking out everywhere um, and ultimately will be fulfilled in everyone and everywhere. And that's Paul's language, um, Colossians, Romans, etc. Okay, that's it. 20 minutes. I'm done. I will see you next week as we dive into the story of the Tanakh.